Hi everyone. Our question today is, why do boomerangs return? A boomerang is something that can be thrown at an angle, such that it returns to the thrower. A boomerang has beveled edges. One wing is the leading edge, and the other is the trailing edge. Air flows over the leading edge and pushes downward on the trailing edge. According to Newton's third law of motion, every action has an equal and opposite reaction, so upward lift is generated, which keeps the boomerang in the air. As the boomerang spins, the top spins faster because it is in the direction of the velocity, whereas the bottom spins more slowly. Air flows faster over the top, creating more lift than the bottom. This unbalance of forces generates torque, which you might expect to cause the boomerang to tilt over, but it doesn't. This is because the boomerang is thrown with a very high speed, so it has a significant amount of angular momentum. If we use the right-hand rule, we can find its direction. When the boomerang is spinning, the torque tries to change the direction of the angular momentum and points towards ourselves, so the boomerang follows a curved path and returns to where it first started. This physics theory is known as gyroscopic precession, where torque paired with angular momentum causes objects to move in an unexpected direction. The most common example is the bicycle wheel. It hangs from the ceiling by a piece of string, and when stationary, it just stays like this. However, when the bicycle is spinning, it actually tilts up by itself. Now we will explain this in a similar way. Remember angular momentum? It is due to the rotation of the bicycle wheel. We can find its direction using the right hand rule. Curl your right hand fingers in the direction of the rotation, and your thumb points the direction of the angular momentum. Here, we curl our fingers anti-clockwise, and the angular momentum points outwards. Looking sideways, gravity tries to tilt the bicycle wheel downwards, creating a twisting force, torque. Use the right hand rule, and the torque points to the left of the bicycle wheel. The angular momentum pointing outwards tries to chase the torque pointing to the left. Thus, the bicycle wheel rotates to the left, resisting gravity. Is there a more interesting way to explain this? Yes. Let me draw your attention to a satellite in this orbit. Now imagine, if we push the satellite upwards at this point, and downwards at that point, you might expect the orbit to tilt this way. But it doesn't. This is because the satellite cannot teleport. It only gradually moves upwards, so it tilts in an entirely different plane. Now let's look at our bicycle from the top view. Gravity tries to tilt it downwards. It is equivalent to these two forces. Does this resemble the satellite? The wheel will try to tilt in this direction. Going back to the normal viewing angle, the bicycle wheel moves to its left. Cool, but how does gyroscopic precession relate to us? Here is a gyroscope. It tilts upwards and resists gravity when spinning. This feature is used in making gyro compasses, where ignoring energy loss, the gyroscope constantly points to the true north. This proves to be better than the magnetic compass, because it is not affected by the metal around it, and is commonly used on airplanes and ships. A gyroscope is also present in our phones. It is a small chip we can oscillate, and the direction and magnitude reflects the angular velocity. Gyroscopic precession can also be used in artificial intelligence. The area it is used in is called human activity recognition. As gyroscopes can measure angular velocity, an idea is that they can be incorporated in smart wristbands and ankle bands. Big data can be used to train an AI model in the process of machine learning to recognize the angular velocity during normal movements of a day. Graphs can be plotted to recognize activities such as sleeping, running, or sitting down. When the sensors detect a huge increase in angular velocity, which stops abruptly, perhaps the person has fallen and is unable to get up. According to the South China Morning Post, there are over 18,000 solitary elderly living in Hong Kong. Technology like this can benefit them by alerting family members or younger neighbors when the smart bands detect irregular movement and suggest that the elderly is in an accident. Who knew that a physics theory could have such a positive impact on the society? Until next time!